Keep on in Shem along. Keep on in Shem along. Jesus will come by and by. Keep on in Shem along. Poor and twirl. Jesus will come by and by. In today's Gospel and Hebrew readings, God's word breaks apart laws that bind us. Some people gathered in the sanctuary on the Sabbath rise up in joyful song as the stranger Jesus comes and breaks their traditions <coughs> and frees one who's been inching along with burdens. One who dared seek sanctuary on the Sabbath despite laws that deemed her unclean, possessed. One who did nothing but receive Jesus' touch that healed and freed her. Keepers of law and tradition rebuke her, but all she did was in along with faith, seeking sanctuary on the Sabbath. Some keepers of law and tradition rebuke Jesus, who heeds the voice of prophet Isaiah, lifting up God's law that lifts up the lowly and rebukes laws of injustice, laws of Lord's earthly kings. Others gathered on the day rejoice as the stranger Jesus sees the burdened one, hears the law-abiding one, and touches the soul of all gathered ones who rise up with joy. They sing in the spirit of the psalmist, lifting up praise to the one who showers the gift of love and mercy on all the earth. The stranger Jesus, who brought unexpected freedom to a burdened, unexpected guest by breaking a tradition enforced by law-abiding Pharisees. Today's gospel reminds and calls to us who have inched along to gather in this sanctuary on this Sabbath. Perhaps in obedience to the law, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Perhaps burdened by the bickering over human laws of state that assail us on our phones, TV screens, and kitchen tables. Inching along, burdened by disease of body, mind, and spirit, by broken relationships, financial hardship, by addiction, by internalized homophobia, racism, and sexism, by fear of losing traditions as a beloved pastor is replaced by a stranger. Will the stranger love us as deeply as the one who left to become shepherd of many sanctuaries in our synod who gather on the Sabbath day? We Lutherans gather in embracing the way of our merciful healing Lord and embracing the tradition of the church by our reforming, persecuted Martin Luther. Martin Luther, known to say, I am a worm, inched along, seeking salvation as a law-abiding monk. He dutifully appeared to confess his sins constantly to his church elder, Staupitz. He was tormented. What if I forget to mention one of my sins? What if I'm not even aware that I behaved in a sinful way? What if I unintentionally violate the law and don't even realize it? Staupitz suggested to Martin that he stop focusing on his sin and instead focus on his love of God. Luther exclaimed, love of God? I hate God. The God whose laws he could never perfectly obey Laws that continually convicted him of sin and convinced him that he was a mere worm 
doubting that Jesus would ever come to him. With time, Martin's rage at God's law shifted to rage at church law. He had vowed to be an obedient monk, seeking comfort and joy. He inched along, burdened by his sinful ways, and he couldn't bear the sight of others, inching to the Roman Catholic Church, yearning to be free of earthly burdens by Jesus' healing touch, and instead being further burdened by rules of priests and cardinals and popes. He called out in the tradition of Jesus, who taught us to pray, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Jesus, who came to the woman, to the law-abiding Pharisee, to those gathered for the Sabbath, and healed all by embodying God's kingdom of mercy that fills human souls with joy. Jesus challenged church law and tradition, laws that Martin Luther, rather, challenged church law and tradition, laws that demanded poor burdened ones to pay indulgences. If left unpaid, the debt would condemn departed loved ones to purgatory. If paid, the church could glorify God with gilded, jeweled, earthly churches. The church could support priests who could read the Latin Bible and correctly interpret it to those gathered on the Sabbath. Luther challenged the church law that demanded celibacy of all clergy, whether or not they had the calling in their hearts. The church he was called to serve as a monk. Luther had no intention of abandoning the church he was called by God to serve. Luther felt called to reform church law so that God's law could touch all of God's people. Instead, priestly keepers of tradition and institutional church law declared Luther a heretic. Fleeing threat of death, Luther found sanctuary in a prince's castle, an unexpected place, where he must have suffered the burden of exclusion from the beloved church he sought to reform an unexpected place where he found refuge in the Bible, in God's word. In God's word where Jesus came by and by. Luther had tirelessly sought salvation in obedience to God's law until one day, while reading words of Paul's letters, Jesus touched Martin Luther. We are saved by grace through faith. Paul had fiercely enforced God's law, indeed killing those that strayed, until he was struck as he was walking and inching along an earthly road. Seized by God's grace, Paul repented and turned around and taught all he could reach that it is impossible for us humans to earn God's love. God's healing touch is a gift showered upon all, just need to believe that God loves each of us just as we are this very moment. It said that Luther was sitting on a toilet when he read Paul's words. A worm inching along was touched by Jesus. Free, Martin sought to free the written word heretofore imprisoned in ancient Latin. Luther translated the Bible into German with the birth of the printing press, Luther endeavored to touch all who could read inside and outside church walls. Church walls. We humans who choose to follow Jesus in Shalom to church, yearning for Jesus' healing touch or obeying the Sabbath law or the family tradition, we are not perfect our church, our synod, the ELCA may not embody the grace of God. Many of us in Shalom, burdened not only by the weight of earthly struggles, but by the weight of shame, guilt, and ever-present sin. 
As we strive to create earthly sanctuary where we can gather on the Sabbath, we inadvertently bind God's grace in an effort to perfectly adhere to law and tradition. My parents immigrated from Germany at a time when German regions were defined as Lutheran or Catholic. For many, it was taboo for a Lutheran to marry a Roman Catholic. Yet my Catholic mother fell in love with my Lutheran father. The Lutheran church welcomed them and blessed their marriage. My mother faithfully respected the Sabbath, brought me to Sunday school, taught me the Lord's Prayer, sang in the choir, yet she didn't receive communion in obedience to her interpretation of church law. She was Catholic after all. I loved gathering in the sanctuary despite being told that my friend and I couldn't serve as acolytes because we were girls and girls weren't permitted on the altar. Yet as a teen, I couldn't understand why my mother wasn't welcome at God's table. So I spoke to Pastor Sebastian, who was shocked that my mom was inching along, burdened by a belief that obedience to a law that excluded her from receiving the body and blood that frees all of us to be God's people. I was filled with joy when Pastor Sebastian assured me that God's word, that Trinity Lutheran Church had no such law, my mother was freed and could rise up with all those gathered at God's welcome table. I imagine there were moments when she still believed that she was breaking a sacred law by changing from one denomination to another. I know that the congregation of Trinity Lutheran Church wondered if they would survive as our beloved sanctuary in the cemetery, modeled after Germany's churches, burned to the ground. We stood on Metropolitan Avenue watching our church become ash, and Trinity Lutheran Church rebuilt on the land of the parish hall, where decades later, faithful ones gather to receive God's grace and lift up praise. Emmanuel Lutheran Church, the Metro Synod, the ELCA, the country, the world constantly changes. A beloved pastor leaves, our church welcomes people of all genders, races, and sexual orientations to pastor God's flock. The ELCA challenges us to be sanctuary to all children of God, documented or not, Lutheran or not. We gather today, sinners, inching along. Sometimes we may be the Pharisees judging our neighbors, Sometimes we may be burdened by judging ourselves, yearning to lean on everlasting arm. Sometimes we will be surprised that in welcoming the stranger, we entertain angels unaware. And today, we ever sinning ones dare to gather in this ever-changing world with faith that God forever showers us with grace, compassion, and love. We are bound by sin and cannot free ourselves. And Christ will forever welcome us to the table to receive the cup of salvation and the body broken for all God's people, the blood shed for all. The body crucified by earthly law frees us from bondage. May we have faith to receive the heavenly touch that heals so we may go in peace to touch all our neighbors so that all may rise and shout for joy.